Hello again, and it's time for another project. Nice, easy, easy one today. Ideal little project for somebody that's just starting out with the router and a scroll saw, and they just want to have a little play about and not wasting too much wood and time on something too complicated. So nice, nice, easy starting projects. These literally the word peace. Eventually, I will put a peace symbol. At a later date, we'll cut out on that one there, put it alongside maybe on the shed. But today we're just going to concentrate on the actual word itself. Now on this one, I actually use tracing paper. And it is possible to put the tracing paper on top of your tablet or laptop. Zoom the word out, whatever word you want to use, to the size of your fencing wood. Mine's literally about six inches and the full project will be six inches, roughly five and a half maybe. By 13 inches and you can zoom the image out to what you want put your tracing paper over the top and let you go around it with a pencil it does work as long as you keep your hand away from the screen itself I find a piece of wood with a support just to rest on as we're drawing around it that way you've wasted no ink or paper on your printer so we've got our template ready we know it fits perfect because I've measured the height on the screen like I've just said we place it on our fencing wood. Now this fencing wood is quite rough when you first get it. You just spend five minutes with a planer or a sander and it comes up really, really nice and it's so cheap to purchase. I use it on all my projects nearly that go on the side of my shed. For me, I like to put the carbon paper underneath and if you just go around that with a pen or pencil, I prefer to use a blue pen and it just stands out nicely against the pencil line that I used previously whilst it was on top of the laptop. So we've gone all the way around this, stick it down with a bit of painter's tape just to stop it moving about. So we've gone round, that way you can use that template over and over again if you wish. I very rarely do two of the same project. And there's our little pattern on there for today. Nice and easy. Now take your time to shade in the areas that you want to remove because you will go away come back and start cutting out the centers of these maybe or removing the outer bit instead of the inner bit it will happen to you so just take your time shading all the areas that we want to remove these sections here they will be cut out on the scroll saw so we're going to lower this by three millimeters all this lettering the p-e-a-c-e -E. Lower that down by three millimeters. Just excuse me, we've got to do it. That's better. Lower it down by three millimeters, and then we put the full piece, once we've tidied it up obviously, on a scroll saw and literally cut it out around all these letters. Remember, we don't want to cut out inside there, inside there. We will be painting this or staining this outer edge. So we'll leave those two as they are. That way it will look like the letters have been stuck onto a backer. That we've painted black or whatever colour we end up with. And then we will put some acrylic paint in here. I want to go like from a dark red up into an orange and maybe finish off in a yellow. Really hippy hippy funky kind of style if you know what I mean. Okay so that's our template done. For the bits as always from me. CNC bits. This one's a 30 degree I believe. They come in different degrees and that's basically just the cut on the end. These are 20s and 30s. These ones are 10s and 15s. And it is literally just the angle of the point on the end. If you just get that. Maybe not. Try again. There we go. And it's just that cut on the end there. So that's a, that's a 30. And we set it to 3 millimeters. I use 3 millimeters on basically all my projects. I made myself a little gauge like that. You can purchase these off eBay, Amazon and plenty of other places. And that is literally three millimetres, that one. One's, number one's the four, number two is three millimetres. And that's literally the same thickness, funny enough, as the CNC bit. 3.175, I'm going to call it three millimetres. So we'll pop that into a reducer collet, an adapter reducer, 6.35 millimetres, or quarter of an inch. You pop your CNC bit into the silver end, and the darkened bit, that will go into your router, We'll put the router on top of our piece of wood, we'll set it to three millimeters, and then we'll use this to do all the lines 
basically we're going to go all the way around here remember you want to be inside the line never route out on the line because with that being three millimeters thick as you've come around here and go around there that section will be smaller literally by 1.5 millimeter the thickness of the cnc bit you're using so always route up to the line and if you do an outset you route up to the line there never route on the line so we'll go around all the letters with that around there once we've done that i normally would change a bit and use these end milling bits they're fantastic I, I do like these i use them on all my projects and it's just a simple case of removing that and you would pop that in there set it to your three millimeters again and then start clearing out all this that's what i would normally do but today because it is quite a chunky little piece there's no detailed work in there quite big big letters so just to speed the process up a bit i will use straight flush metric bits now you can get these ebay amazon they come in different sizes big big chunky thing like that they are quite aggressive so the reason why we don't go straight in with this to do the lines it, and it will do it but as you come around to these smaller sections let's say you're going around there with this route a bit because it's quite aggressive there is a chance that you might just pop that letter off altogether or around this small section here you might just pop it off it's entirely up to you guys what you want to use remember these are just the bits that i use there's profile bits out there spiral up cuts really fancy fancy pieces that come with a fancy fancy price so for today straight flush bits i will put a link to all these bits the cnc bits the adapter and milling bits and the straight flush bits in the title at the end of the video okay let's pop our cnc bit in we'll route out the letters first and then we'll throw in one of these straight flush bits nice double-sided blade on that one so that won't take too long that you will see how quick that will whip that out there and because we've done our lines first remember we made a nice separation between that side and that side and round there so as we come up with our larger router bit as we come up to that line there because it's already routed out that will pop off no problem leaving those little bits nicely intact once we've took all that out like i say we will tidy it up and then we'll get a scroll saw and if you cut it out we'll talk about the blade on the scroll saw later okay let's set our cnc bit up in the router We'll set it to three millimeters and we'll start routing this one out. you can see from that we've gone all the way around with our cnc bits and i mentioned before remember you just want to go up to the line you can just about see the pencil line there it'd be the odd place where you've probably gone onto it it's no big deal whatsoever we're going to tidy this all up with a dremel once we've actually took out all this middle section and for that we're going to use metric straight flush bit today nice big chunky thing like that because it is quite an easy project and we know for a fact that will fit in there no problem whatsoever so we'll just basically pop that in the router we can set it to that depth over there remember we've already cleared some out and we'll literally just start taking out the centers of all these letters like i said previously there is different bits and it's just a case of finding the bit that you're happy with when i purchased my old black and decker router they don't even make them anymore but I can still find them on eBay. I was lucky with the last one, it came with a bag full of these router bits. I don't even know what these are called. I've never used them yet, but they are brand new. They might be fantastic bits. A couple of flutes in them, so nice weird shapes. 
but there's loads and loads of different types out there. I have a box full of routers, fancy things like this that I've never even used before. Don't even ask what that is, I've no idea. But anyway, just find a bit that works for you. But if you're starting out and you don't want to waste too much money on fancy, fancy bits, for what I pay for a CNC bit and you get 10 in a box, you want to be paying four or five times as much as that for a profile bit or something. So if you just want to start out and maybe it's something that you're not going to be comfortable with, you haven't gone out and wasted a lot of money. But once you find the bit that you use for you, just stick with it. If it works, why change things? OK, we'll pop this Imperial Straight Metric Flush bit in. It's a mouthful, but I will put a link on to these kind of things. And we'll literally just remove all the lettering now, all the inners of the lettering, should we say. You can see from that we've gone all the way around with the straight flush bit that took that out no problem i do personally think i'm ready for some new bits just a bit rough it might be the beveling in the wood that's done that but remember we've got to tidy it up first just a bit of sandpaper we'll get a dremel just give it a general tidy up now they are good those straight metric bits but as the title says, they are a straight angle on it. So any 20 degree or 30 degree angle that we're trying to cut, which was just the angle of the wood, obviously with the straight bit, because we've got up to clear it all out, we've basically done away with that angle completely. And I'm quite happy with that. That doesn't affect my uh, little projects at all. So straight bits, like it says, it's a straight blade on there completely. So as you're routing out, you're going to get a straight edge on it. So you could have used a 10, 15, a 20 or a 30 degree bit. It wouldn't really matter. Or you can use the end middle bits that I use all the time. If you wanted that little bit of an angle. But I'm quite happy with that. So far, so good. Okay, before we give it a general tidy up, we're just going to cut it out on a scroll saw. We'll do that next. Right, just before we cut this out, I just want to talk a little bit about the types of blade there's some fantastic scrollers out there and they all have their own personal choice of blade. Mine is actually a spiral blade, which is one of those love or eight kind of blades. You'll either really get used to them or they're just not going to work for you. Now the reason, the good thing about the spiral blades, the teeth are spiraled the full length of the blade. So basically they will cut in any direction. Whereas with these more commoner blades, like the standard pin blade, you see it's got a pin at both ends. That will only cut in the forward direction. So if you're feeding your wood, you'd have to feed it through there, let's say, turn the wood, feed it round, turn it, and then turn it, and then turn it, and it's fiddly, too much for me. Whereas with a spiral blade, if that was once that's in place, like all blades, they want to feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That way you know you've got the blade in the right way. Doesn't matter which way the spiral blade goes in, as long as it's smooth on the way down and rough. Whereas the other two blades, the pin blade, and there's a pinless one here, this is ideal for smaller, intricate projects. You want the teeth facing towards you, smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. Same with the pinless blade, but always have the teeth facing towards you. Because you're going to feed your wood into the blade, like I've just said with these, and turn it and feed it again and turn it and feed it again. However, the spiral blade, like I said, we can just start there, cut down, 
and make sure it go across and just cut like that. You won't have to turn that wood at all. Ideally, if you've got big projects, something like this where you're trying to turn that on a table, if you've got a 16 inch table, this piece of wood is not going to turn on it. But it's a personal choice, you just use what you need. Now we have one pilot hole to drill. Now a pilot hole is where you actually drill a hole in there, with, just with a drill, nothing fancy. Obviously the bigger you can make the hole, the better. Then what we do, once we've drilled the hole, you can feed your blade through there, attach it to the saw, and we'll cut out that middle section there. There is another section over here, but I think we might just get away with squeezing the blade through that gap there and cut out that section. Okay, I'll pop the spiral blade of my choice, Pegasus number five, onto the saw, and we'll quickly cut this one out. Right, you can see from that we've made it all the way round with our Pegasus number no. five spiral blade. Remember, that's just my choice of blade. You could have cut this out just as easy with a basic pin blade or a pinless blade. It's entirely up to you what you prefer to use. Now, I'm not a scroller by any stretch of the imagination, and I personally, I do think I'm ready for another blade. I struggled down this bottom section. It's not as smooth as it could be. That doesn't bother me personally. That's what sanding drums and sandpaper are for. So what I want to do with this now is just a general tidy up, just to get into side here. I just want to round the measures off slightly, not fantastic, but definitely we want to tidy up the front and the back. And eventually we will route out a nice slit in here. I'll show you that a bit later. Or on something like this, if you're going to hang it, you could literally get a pin nail in there and a pin nail in there and actually just hook it on that way. But I'm going to put a slit in the back. We'll show you that in a minute. Just before that, we'll give it a nice tidying up. I like to use these engraving bits. These are just cheap eBay specials. You'll get a pack of, pack of 30 for next to nothing. Definitely here in the UK anyway. I like to get one with a nice flat head on, something like that one there. We'll pop up that in our flexi shaft, if I just show you quickly. This is the flexi shaft I use. Not a Dremel original, just eBay again, and I've had no issues with that. No problem whatsoever. We'd basically pop that in there and go all the way around and just tidy these sides up. We use our sanding drum to do the sides with. And then we've even got a smaller sanding drum here, which would pack up, put on the flexi cable, excuse me, and actually go inside there if you wanted to and tidy all that. That will fit in all there, no problem whatsoever. A bit of sandpaper, skim over with a mouse sander. I'm going to put our slit in the back and then we're ready for painting. We'll clean up now. Right, that's enough sanding down for me. These little projects are just for the side of my shed at the end of the day. So I don't want to spend a lot of time getting them perfect. But it's definitely near enough for what we need today. So just before we start painting this one, I literally just want to put a slit in the back for hanging purposes. And for that, I like to use a T-slot bit. Like this one here. I think I'm ready for a new one of those as well. Now that's a 516s one, 
and they're ideal just for putting a slit in the back for your screw to go in. What I like to do is I did a couple of samples on a scrap piece of wood. I know this is the same thickness piece of wood and that's what I'm going to choose. You can see I've marked it off and I will basically set my router to that depth every time. And I know that's enough for these projects for the screw to fit on like so. English just slide it over like that and that will hang your projects no problem. And that way you have no nails or screws or anything on show. Now the tighter, or the, should I say the further you screw that into your wall or your fence. So basically you just got the edge showing, the tighter it is to squeeze on. And that will go on the really tight and you'll have no issues. They come in different sizes obviously if you've got bigger projects so we'll mark off the center of this just one little line down there bigger projects i have put two slits on maybe one there and one across there it's entirely up to you like i say you could put pin nails on the in straight into the fence and hook it on nice bit of chain on top or whatever you could have left it on the wood completely and done a different project but anyway we'll quickly put a slit in the back here with the 5 16th t-slot bit just there, can we see it? One, two, three. There we go. So it's a quarter inch shaft on it, so there's no adapter collet needed. So we pop that in, set it to that depth, and quickly route out a slit in the back. Right, we've put our slit in the back, nothing too complicated there, but it is an ideal way of hanging. So we've got our screw there, that will literally go in, into the fence, hold that, and that should hopefully be enough to hold that project in place. Like I say, on bigger ones, you could actually put one at either side. Now painting wise, just cheap acrylic paints for me, these are Crawford and Black, I've used these on all my projects on the acrylic side of things but I like to add a bit of water to make more of a stain and we just let it soak in nicely to the wood I'll have no sealants on here or anything there is wood sealants you can purchase which you can brush on first let it dry and basically that stops the paint from bleeding into the side walls I've never had any issues on this cheap cheap fencing wood remember so I don't put anything on just as it is I've never bothered with any primers or anything like that too much work and effort involved on that side of things. I've certainly got no issue with these. Like I say, we do water them down so it soaks in nicely to the wood. So more of a stain effect. So we're going to start off with the red for the bottom layer, hopefully. And we'll come slightly up, blending it into orange. And hopefully as we go up towards the top of the lettering, we'll hopefully end up with yellow. And then we'll work out, see how the project looks. We'll give it a quick sanding over just to make this wood nice and smooth again. Hopefully leaving all the lettering filled in with the nice colours. And then we'll either put a stain on here or just a black paint just so it really pops out nicely okay so we'll go inside now and we'll paint this come back when we've sanded it down done the outer edges and we sprayed on a nice finish of some description crystal clear or the 151 lacquer and this project will be finished Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now I gave it four or five coats of a 151 clear lacquer. There is better finishes out there. Spyurophanes, polyurophanes, total boats. The list goes on and on. Just a case of finding one that works for you and what you need for your little projects. These basically just go on the side of my shed. So I'm not overly concerned really how long they last for. They're just fun projects for me, they're of no importance. But anybody can make these kind of things. If you can hold a router and use a scroll saw, there's nothing to stop you. Now to recap, we use CNC bits to do the lines first. And then we use straight flush bits to remove 
or the centres of the letters. We cut it out on a scroll saw with a Pegasus number no. 5 spiral blade. Then we use cheap acrylic paints to paint it with. And then spray it on a 151. Just give it that nice shine as you can see from there. And that's it. This little project is finished. Just before we go, you may recall at the beginning of the video about doing a peace sign. We literally just took the piece of wood off the end there. The symbol, should I say. So we made one of those. We put plenty of colour in there. And while I was at it, we've gone a bit hippie crazy. So we made ourselves a nice flower, just cut out on a scroll saw. And then we use a Dremel just to lower that circle, just so that centre bit is slightly raised. And if you make one, you can make two just as easy. And if you make two, there's no stopping you at making three. And you've guessed it, if you made three, you might as well make four. A little bit of scrap wood there at the end. All painted with acrylic paints and all sprayed with a 151. Okay, and that's it. This little project is finished. We're going to find a space on the shed. Thank you very much for watching.